Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. In today's video, I want to talk to you about 10 compact knives that I really like a lot. Some of these you probably are familiar with, some are a little bit less well known, but let me tell you why I like them and some of the different functionalities of each of these. Maybe they'll fit into your outdoor system, whether it's camping, hiking, backpacking, bushcrafting, or survival. Um, I think these guys have a lot to offer. Let's start off and talk about the Mora Eldris. So a couple things about this. First off, it comes in a variety of different colors. Second thing is that you have the backing and the history of a company like Mora that just makes excellent, excellent knives. The third thing that stands out to me about this one is this big chunky handle. I can get a full four fingers on there and really bear down, but you got that tiny little blade. So it offers you a lot of basically, you know, maneuverability for this tiny little blade, but you can hold it lots of angles. You can choke way up. You know, you got to do detail cuts. You can do it with this. You want to really carve into something aggressively. You can do that as well. Now, obviously none of these knives are going to be like huge survival knives for, you know, tons of batoning and stuff like that. But this thing just functions really well. I've used this for a lot of carving, um, spoons and, you know, bowls and things like that, or just, you know, making feather sticks. Uh, this thing definitely does some great work. One thing I found is when I'm out there in the woods, you know, and I'm doing different types of uh, woods tasks, bushcrafting tasks, woods, woodworking, um, even just survival type tasks, I, I'm using my large knife for some, you know, hefty chopping and stuff, but a tiny little knife like this is great. I did a survival outing not long ago, and I had a huge knife, and I had this Essie Azula, and I used this like 90% of the time for the cuts I was carrying out. So having a Mora Eldris, just throw this around your neck as a neck knife, Lots of functionality to this uh, this compact little knife. So for this one, we're looking at 2.5 ounces stainless steel for your blade, a two inch blade. And uh, price point is gonna be probably right around $30, depending on where you pick it up, give or take. Next up, I wanna talk about this, which is the Ontario Knife Company Falcon. It's from their Ranger series. Uh, 8.1 inches from end to end, 4.3 inch blade. It is 5160 steel. Now, according to the website from OKC, this is discontinued. So you're gonna have to dig around to find this one. The reason I like this one so much is that it, again, Four fingers fit nicely here. Got a really solid grip on it, 0.25 inches thick. You can check out my review that I did on this. I'll put a link down in the description section. But um, just a compact knife at 0.25 inches thick, very maneuverable. It's got that flat grind, came to me nice and sharp, and I've used it you know, on and off over the years. I just keep coming back to this thing. Every once in a while, I'm like, ah, maybe I'll sell it, but I just like it. It just functions really nicely. Um, you know, it's you can still do some aggressive chopping or batoning, I should say, with this thing, even though it's not very a very long blade. So, but you can get in there and split the wood most of the way, and then once you get it in there, you can drive a uh, drive a wedge, and then you can uh, you know split the rest of the wood. So, obviously, we think of a longer blade for batoning, but this thing has definitely held up over the years for various use. Um, and the other thing, you know, for me, a blocky handle is my preference. I don't like a big um, handle that's got all kinds of contours. Just chunky works for me. So the OKC Falcon, definitely a, definitely a winner in my book for a more compact knife. Let's move on to this one, which is the SECR 2.5. 2.5 inches long for your uh, for your blade, 1095. It does have this, um, it's not a coating, but it's a finish that they call on it. I have one of these in orange, as you can obviously see, and I also have one of the originals with the um, with more of the satin finish. It's got a little bit of a tumble, I think, and then a brown handle. This one I haven't used as much as the other one, but great little knife. This is meant to be a like a bird and trout knife. But again, I mean, this thing throws awesome sparks with a fire steel. It's got that nice sharp edge there, so you can do some scraping. And it's just very comfortable in hand. I can still get all four fingers when I hold it like this. Even when I hold it like this, still four fingers. So that's not, that doesn't, you don't have to have that for every single knife. I think the SE um, Azula there, a little bit less as far as the grip, doesn't give me the full four fingers. But um, yeah, it does some great cuts and uh, very manageable. You can throw a lanyard on there. Um, yeah, I mean, I found as far as carving, this one really competes nicely with the Eldris. I find the Eldris works a little bit better for carving, but this one is still able to do some nice detail work. And then obviously if it's built as a, you know, a fish and a bird knife, then, um, yeah, it's going to do that, take care of the uh, processing out in the field really nicely. So I have a video, uh, featuring this one. I can't actually remember if it's the orange one or if it's the, uh, or the one that's got the, uh, the more satin finish. Um, but either way. Great knife from Essie. Just a, a good investment if you pick up one of these, especially as a companion knife. Here's a system I got not too long ago from Black Bear Custom Kydex. So an SE5, the CR 2.5, we have a, a fire steel from Exotac, and then uh, it's a clear sheath for the um, for the 2.5 and for the uh, 5, and then this one pops out so you can do like a front pocket carry with the uh, Ulti clip. 
That's what the back looks like. Let me show you the Black Bear Custom Kydex logo, which is awesome. So he does awesome work. Definitely check him out, Black Bear Custom Kydex. And this is a system I built with the uh, 5 and the 2.5. Next up here, we have the Gerber Principle. I compared this to a Mora, just a standard like Companion in the past. Very similar in functionality. That Scandi grind is nice. Uh, this one just has a different kind of look. Overall, you've got the tubing going through, kind of a rubberized handle as well. Nice spine for um, throwing sparks and for scraping. Um, does come with a multi-mount sheet that kind of goes in a variety of different directions. 420 high carbon steel for this one. And this is, you know, similar to some other knives we'll look at and to the Mora. It's just kind of a cool bushcrafting, camping, multifunctional knife. We're looking at about 3.7 ounces. End-to-end -end length is 7.5 inches and your blade length is about 3.5 inches price point for this one's going to run around 60 bucks the thing that made this stand out to me is this uh, multi-mount sheath so it clicks in there and you can mount this a variety of different ways so you can do it horizontally you can do it vertically you can mount it on a pack you know with molly gear so lots of different options and then easy to uh easy to release it like so again 420 high carbon steel for this and this is the gerber principle all right, next up here, we have a knife probably a lot of people are not familiar with. It's made by Three Dog Knife out of Anchorage, Alaska. It's called the Riot. It's made of Elmac steel. You got a four inch blade. Um, really, I mean, it's, it's made to be a compact version of their huge chopper called the Severance. And uh, it's made to be just used super aggressively. One of the great things about Elmax is that it just keeps an edge forever. I have really beat on this thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've used this for batoning. It is just, it's a real compact but really stout knife you can see it's got kind of a cool angle there right so if you hold the blade flat that that um handle really drops down with the g10 um semi-aggressive jimping they're calling that a um i think they call it a saber saber grind into a tanto edge but it does allow you to do a lot of different work so i mean you can really bear down with this thing it does slice well um the grind on it is i mean it's amazing how much i've used this knife and it is still quite sharp uh, it comes with a Kydex sheath. You can also get it with leather. Uh, right now, these guys are out of stock, but you know you got to put your order in way ahead of time. When I reached out to Three Dog Knife like years ago, probably four or five years ago, it took them a good maybe two months, I would say, to get me my uh, to get me my knives. But um, yeah, these things are excellent, and they're made to be really aggressively used. Um, you know, people up in Alaska are not messing around what they're doing in the outdoors. So I would definitely recommend this a uh, a unique knife, Three Dog Knife company and the riot is what it's called next up we have the msk 2.5 from tops 2.5 because it is 2.5 inches it does have that nice scandy grind it's got the uh, standard kind of tops traction coating up top this one doesn't look as used probably because I, ha I just haven't used it as much this one came to me from a battle box i don't know probably five or six months ago maybe, maybe a little more than that um but it's been a good knife you can see a little bit of use there probably on the uh on the coating um, it's been a good knife. I can see why people like this. I think Craig told me years ago that this was like an EDC knife from Craig from Tops, who works over with the uh, the company. Nice micarta handles. Um, you can definitely hold it like this. You can hold it like this. The jimping is just right for me. It gives you enough enough traction that you can bear down, but it doesn't feel like overwhelming. Um, yeah, I was using this just before the video started, just messing around. And here's some of the feathers from that. This one you could definitely carry as a neck knife. Um, you got the lanyard hole here. You could put a small lanyard on there so you could run maybe one or two fingers through it for extra grip and control. But just a, a really cool knife. Um, I've seen this one over the years. I've always wanted to get one. And then when it came in a battle box, I was pretty pumped about it. So uh, this one, it's going to give you a bigger blade profile than the 2.5. As you can see, I mean, it's just like a wider blade, but very similar in functionality. More contoured uh, handle for this one. Than for the 2.5 but uh both coming in 1095 for your steel and uh yeah msk 2.5 definitely a win from tops this is the spider coat enough i think it's enuf it might be enuff -F, but uh it's in vg10 for your steel it's got the bi-directional grip this grip is awesome it really really because it kind of it like it says it's got a direction going one way another way when you grip this man that thing really just gives you a ton of control um, it will beat up your hands if your hands are not, you know, you have no cal you have no calluses or anything, um, but with gloves, shouldn't be a problem. You lanyard hole, VG10. It does come in a drop point option as well. I just like the look of this one more um, and have used this for outdoor tasks and it works, you know, just fine. Got the little spidey hole there as well as you can see. 
Here's a look at your sheath system. Uh, you can mount this for scout style. You can mount it vertically. You can switch that clip up on the back. Obviously, you can just throw it into a pack if you want to do that as well. Um, Spyderco makes great products. They're not known for their fixed blades, but when it comes to a compact little fixed blade, this one has definitely done a, uh, a nice job for me. So looking at 3.8 ounces for your weight, 2.75 inches for your blade length, and your end-to-end -end length is about 6.75 inches. Price point for this one, pretty expensive, around 130, I would say, where I've seen it on most sites. Uh, this one is a little bit harder to find too, but uh, yeah, it's been a good knife. It definitely, you're, you're paying for 130 bucks, you could pick up, you know, an SE6 and maybe something else as well. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, so cool knife, a little expensive, but it's functioned well for me. So I like all these knives, that's why I'm showing them to you, but these last three knives for me are total winners. The SC Azula, this is a brand new one I just got from a battle box. They sent it um, kind of as is with the skeletonized handle, and then they also sent these uh, handles as well. So I like that with the kind of tan and brown contrast. I showed you this one before, which is the Venom Green, and I did the paracord wrap there, and I've used this on a variety of different outings, kind of run it as a neck knife. This other one I got with the orange handle and the um, the green steel. Uh, this I used a couple times on outings. I just didn't have to use it as much when I was out there. Um, but the Venom Green one I used the most. These are just great knives. I mean, they cut well. Um, the coating is going to keep them safe from the weather a little bit more than if you didn't have a coating. Obviously, hard to throw, extremely hard to throw a, a spark off a of fire steel with the coating. Um, if you had to in an emergency situation, obviously, you could just use the blade. But... The thing about this is that they fit really nicely in my hand. So there's a full four finger grip there. If I kind of go to three and I can kind of put my thumb out like this, again, great control. And, you know, sometimes you'll just find you don't need a huge knife. Now, I kind of, I do agree with the concept that it's easier to do small knife things with a big knife as opposed to big knife things with a small knife. So I'm going to default to a larger knife. But a small knife like this, any of these guys can do a really good job, you know, probably a 90% of the tasks that most people are uh, are doing. Another thing about SE is that they stand behind their products. I mean, you can smash an SE and just, you know, be really aggressively using it and then all of a sudden break it and they're going to stand behind their products. They're going to take care of you. So they, they feature that as part of their kind of like, you know, why you should invest in an SE. Obviously, if you get an SE knife, you shouldn't be out there just trying to destroy it. That's pretty silly. Um... But, you know, if in the process of using it, you have an issue, they're going to stand behind it, which is awesome. So look, I'll show you all three of these here real quick. There's a look at all three of them real quick. I am definitely not, generally speaking, like a knife collector. My knives that I get are users, and I try to sell, give away, pass on, whatever it is, other knives. Um, but all three of these guys uh, are going to see use. I've already used this one, this one, and this one, and now the, uh, the new one's going to see use as well. So SE Azula, big thumbs up for this one. This next one is the Topps Tanimboka Puko. Every time I say that, I think of Ben from Living Survival because when he did his review on this, he was noting what an interesting name it was. So you're looking at uh, 7.75 inches from end to end, 3.63 inches for your blade length. Um, it, it's just kind of, a, again, a chunky neutral handle. You can see this one's definitely gotten some use. I got this piggybacked on my Topps uh, Bushcrafter Kukri, um, and it's just a nice system, a larger chopper, this smaller one. Uh, it does have these um, these bolts that basically go through. Some people weren't a big fan of those. I think it kind of mixes the like outdoor bushcrafty and also kind of an urban feel. You can see it's got the um, the hole for a bow, bow drill uh, if you want to make a bow drill. And um, yeah, you can sharpen all the way and you can see the little choil there. But just a, a neutral handle that allows you to do a lot of work. It does have a 90 degree spine so you can throw sparks off that. Which, if you know tops, a little bit rare that they have that as the um, as an option for on the back of their uh, knives. Look at the handle, my Carta handles, or look at the liners, I should say there. Yeah, again, similar to this, similar to like an SE6 uh, Rat Seven from Ontario Knife Company. Just kind of chunky and neutral, but does a lot of work. This is a classic knife that's been you know used. This style of knife has been used around the world for a long time. So. Definitely recommend this. Not super cheap. Runs around 130 if I remember correctly. Um, but a good a good investment. And again, Tops stands behind their knives as well too. So Tan and Boca Puco from Tops Knives. I hope you watched all the way to the end here. This knife is one of my favorite of all time. So definitely top five, maybe top three. Maybe my favorite of all time. I don't have to really think about it. But this is an awesome, awesome knife. So Scandi Grind. This is the SE RB3. Uh, designed by Ruben over there with the SE Crew. Just made it, he made an awesome knife. So you got those canvas handles, um, Scandi grind, 1095 for your steel. Um, 
It's in their Camp Lore series. 90 degree spine so you can throw sparks. Super comfortable in hand, in hand. You can see the theme that comes up again, just kind of a chunky neutral handle, but enough of a finger guard there that you can really lock it in. I think in the video I shot for this, I made, I made a baton. So I carved a baton just to show you kind of some of the, the work that this thing can do. Um, I haven't sharpened it up much over the years. I've used it a ton and it stays nice and sharp. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? Three inches for your blade. That's why it's the RB3. Um, yeah, man, this is just an awesome, awesome knife. Again, I like a large survival knife. I'll go with a big, you know, hefty chopper. But uh, this one I've combined with my SE Hungless. So as far as a large knife and a smaller, more compact knife, those are my two favorites. The SE Hungless is the top for me when it comes to survival knives, a big hefty one. And then this for a more compact one. Those are my two, my two top knives. You know, as far as a combination, they're just pretty much unbeatable. I just think those are awesome. So yeah, definitely want to recommend this. It now comes with kind of a, um, a different finish than this one. This one's a little bit more old school. It's got kind of a, a black, not a black, I guess a kind of a grayish finish on it now. And, um, but still, uh, it looks very cool and a really cool knife. So RB3, highly, highly recommend this knife. Price point for the RB3 is right around 120. And again, like the other SE knives, I mentioned here the, uh, the Azula and the CR 2.5. These things have a lifetime warranty, so use them, really get out there and test them, and they're going to stand behind their products. All right, guys, so let me give you a little bit of theory behind compact knives, right? So like I said before, it's easier to do uh, small knife tasks with a large knife than to try to do large knife tasks with a small knife. I think that's true. However, um, I think, you know, for most of us when we're out in the woods, a compact knife, you know, maybe three, three and a half inches is going to do a lot of good. Now, if you know Dave Canterbury, his kind of standard is five inches for your standard survival knife, maybe bigger than that, but it's got to be at least five inches. I generally agree with that, but I find that these knives do so much of the work that I need them to do when I'm out in the, um, out in the woods. And I do like systems, right? So I got my Tanamoka Puko combined with the Topps Bushcraft, Bushcrafter Kukri knife. I've got the RB3 combined with the Hung List. I've got an Eldris, the Eldris here combined with the um, Spider Crow Bushcraft or Bushcrafter UK. I think it's the Bushcraft UK. But um, yeah, systems are, are great for me. And I find in the systems, I'm glad I had the large knife for some of those big tasks, but so much of the work is done with these more compact knives. So let me hear from you guys. What do you like for a compact knife? What stands out to you? Um, you know, what are you looking for? Maybe some, some ones I haven't mentioned here that you really like. Let's see your thoughts and your feedback in the, uh, in the comment section down below. All right, guys, thanks as always for checking out the videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.